Mike check one two one two. The dogs in the building. The dogs in the building. We got the Warzone Wrestling crew in the building with me, man. Bag boy Jer on the boards. You know the vibes, man. We out here living, living the dream. Living a little bit. <laughs> living a little bit, right? Living a little bit at a time. Man, so you got a a, a professional wrestling promotion. Uh, you could say that. Uh, I guess by the books, we're more of a backyard wrestling promotion for now. But, right. Um, we do our thing. Yeah. <laughs> we have been for a very long time. What's that like, man? What's it like having a professional wrestling promotion? Uh, it's so weird, man, because once you do wrestling, you look at everything from a different point of view. Yeah. Because you see how you manipulate the things on camera. Right. And then you just see that in everyday life. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah, I get that a lot with, um, you know, being um having the studio and stuff. So, yeah. like... When I, I can't just listen to music anymore. Like you're picking it apart. I'm picking it apart. Mm -hmm. Everything, every frequency, every sound, every, every you know delay, every effect. It's just like yeah, it's not the same for me anymore. So I can't even like enjoy it like I used to. Yeah, because you become jaded to things as you do them. Yeah, you that's know? a fact. My job was very interesting to me my first day, but by now I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like okay, I yeah. did everything. I'm just here to get a paycheck. <laughs> yeah, so. Bro, one of the things that really impressed me about, like, you know, your promotion and what you put together is just, like, the sheer amount of wrestlers that you have on the roster, the fans that you've built in over the years, the followers. Like, tell me about, like, how that process went. Jeez, man. Uh, we literally, when we started, I was 16. It was 2002. And uh, I just realized one day, I'm too old to be playing with wrestling toys. Right. <laughs> and then I found some friends that <laughs> wanted to wrestle. And I started writing that because I just always had a passion for write, the writing and the creative process of wrestling. The, right. the matches, eh, whatever. They're fake fights. Yeah. But the intricate stories always kept me. And I was, I've was i been writing wrestling technically since I was a youth. A yeah. Big, a very small youth. That's what, like, because, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. Like, yeah. I stay current. I don't really watch WWE anymore. But I stay current with all the, um, you know, the... Uh, the the happenings i watch aew mm -hmm. and you know i'm i'm the thing about professional wrestling is the the stories that always got me that always intrigued me like when i was a kid the action was cool mm -hmm. but the stories and people like you know obviously you have to suspend your disbelief just like when you're watching a, a marvel movie or a dc movie yeah and there's superheroes flying at you know yeah. <laughs> ungodly like, rates yeah it's kind of just superheroes that you can see in person right you know that's what it is it's still guys in spandex just like batman but these people are really jumping off of stuff yeah whereas, there's no there's no edits and there's no yeah, special effects there's no stunt doubles it's one take you know talk a little magic. bit about the um storytelling process through a match through a match, I can guide people through a match, but I'm more so, being as I run the show, right. I look as far in advance as I can. Right. So coming into the next year, say things run as they normally do, around February or March, I'll start looking at where I want to be in September for okay. our big show, for a domination. And then I'll figure that out and I'll write backwards from there. Okay. Knowing that along the way things are going to change, people yeah. are going to drop, people are going to get hurt. Yeah. You never know what the what, what ins and outs you deal with yeah. throughout your throughout the progression of your 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 you know because it's it's so many different variables. Mm -hmm. Like especially you, like, you with so many people involved. Yeah, you can't control how many people do you have on the roster. I couldn't tell you at this point. <laughs> you <couldn't tell laughs> so many people. Um, geez, at domination this year, I think we had over 30 people on the card that was that was the single most impressive thing to me i gotta yeah. say about you know the the um wzw promotion is just like i was like yo he's got a full roster yeah and there's like different characters do you let people like be their own characters it's pretty loose uh, right. sometimes a guy will just come in and he's new and like i don't know him yeah. personally and i don't know anything about him so i'll try to get some ideas but if I'm not feeling anything, I'm just going to throw something ridiculous at you to <laughs> yeah. see what sticks. Right. You know, and sometimes that's the best stuff. I've had guys that I'm like, hey, you're a Subway employee now. <laughs> and they're like, what does that have to do with wrestling? But it does. You know, you need it doesn't to develop matter. a character. Yeah. It's a, it's about the, the see what you've got to explain to them is like it's not about the gimmick. It's about yeah. you yeah. taking a subject mm -hmm. and developing it and cultivating 
something entertaining out of that. Yes, it's all about entertainment. And a lot of guys focus too much on the actual vision of what happens in a match. Right. Which I guess this gets me back to the question you asked about taking you through a match. Um, Guys get too focused on the intricacies of what they're doing in the ring. Right. And while they're in there thinking about what they have to do next, they're not realizing that they're losing the crowd. Yeah. So they're not, like, going by the reaction, which is the best way to do wrestling. They're not in the moment. Exactly. You want to be in the moment because those people are there to watch the moment. Right. And they want to be a part of the moment. So if you're just in there, like, going through the motions and nobody cares. Pull it a little closer to you. Yeah, sorry, man. No, you're good. If you're just going through the motions, nobody's going to give a crap. Right. You have to look like you care. Oh, dear, yeah. So, like, I mean, so, you know, just me, like, being a, a polymath myself and, like, dealing with so many different things, I can relate that to, like, people who come in and record and, like, you know, they wrote th- they wrote their lyrics down, but, like, sometimes they sound like they're reading it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead it's the of, same like, thing. Instead of they're feeling the words they're saying, and it's this, it's literally the same thing. Yeah, we've got a lot of guys that are pretty newer. They came from other areas this year, and uh, I like them right. as dudes, and I think they're okay performers, but they just, they're missing something. They're yeah. going way too long. You can just see that they're not experienced, and they, uh, they're they trying to do too many things, right. and the things you're doing really don't matter. You know, you got point A and point B of a match, and everything in the middle is the middle of the match, you right. know? You got a couple things you know you're supposed to do. You know you're ending. You just got to get there, really, and... It, but you got to get there with style. <laughs> yes. And these, some of these guys, they, they kill me. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, these guys have been going 35 minutes. I just needed a, a good 10. Yeah. I killed the whole crowd for the rest of the yeah, show. Yeah, 35 minutes is too long. Yeah. I, I feel like some of the best matches that I've watched are like, you know, the matches that are just like, you know, 20 minutes tops. Yeah. Like, anything over 20 minutes is it's like. Too much. Like, did you watch? Um, oh, you said you don't really be watching wrestling anymore. No, but I try to keep up. Uh, you try to keep I up. I try to keep up on what's going on. Like Kenny Omega versus John Moss. I was watching that match mm-hmm. and it just like, it was just a little like 30 minutes, 40 minutes is just a little too it's long. It's a little too much. Yeah. And you're losing a casual audience because I love wrestling. And I loved wrestling for most of my life, but at this point, I kind of have a love hate with it. Yeah. So I'm not really there for. You've been these so overexposed. Matches. Yeah. My whole life, yeah. my first memory is wrestling. You know, I just remember watching like uh, WWF superstars with my dad when I was three. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite wrestler back in the day? Oh my, early probably like uh, the Ultimate Warrior, but I can say my all-time favorite, badass Billy Gunn. <laughs> Legend, <laughs> Mr. Ass. Yeah, the greatest to ever do it. <laughs> Billy Gunn, yeah, he was, he's pretty, I mean. He's still out there. Yeah, he's still, and he looks good, he's too. He's jacked. He's still <laughs> He's jacked. like 58. Yo, it's crazy how much bigger he looks in AEW than he did in WWE. Yeah, because a lot of wrestlers are smaller now. Yeah. A lot of guys are really small. That I think that that's an issue with wrestling, too, and that's coming from me, who's like 100 pounds. But <laughs> yeah, I but think, you have a you have a, a important role, too. Yeah, I'm. I'm putting a puzzle together. Yeah. Really. You're putting a puzzle together and like you can like like if you were on screen you could garner sympathy. Yeah. Like if let's say I was on I screen could. and I was a and I was a big bad mean guy and I was like bullying you. Yeah. Like you'd garner so much sympathy and I'd garner so much heat. <laughs> They'd be like, Look at this dude picking on the team. That's true. <laughs> like he's just trying to put together a good wrestling show. I was an active uh character for ch- until twenty sixteen in right. WCW, so for fourteen years. But I was always a bad guy. <laughs> that's the oh, way to do it. That's, but that's also, you can garner heat from that, too. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's like, oh, this jerk, he's like 100 pounds, and he's beating people with run-ins and yo, treating so everybody like crap. I think I think there's an important lesson here that people can relate professional wrestling to, to life, as in when it comes to, like, you know, taking what you got and working with it and making it work. Because, like, you know, you're born with, like, certain traits, a certain look, a certain size, a certain build. Mm-hmm. And in the world of professional wrestling, all of that can work. Yeah. It just depends on what you do with it. Yeah, exactly. Like, playing to your strengths. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and hiding your weaknesses. Exactly. And a lot of guys don't do that. Yeah. You know? That's just, where they look bad. Yeah, they just try to go out there and, you know, maybe do what somebody they seen done somewhere yeah. else. They're like, oh, I saw this guy do two flips on TV. I'm going to try it. And it looked cool. In the front of everybody. But it looked cool for him. Yeah. It's not going to That's because be he's s- been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> your match should not look like a ballet routine. That's no. my standing. A lot of the guys that wrestle for me hate my standing on it, but... 
That's yeah, kind of the it. problem with like new age wrestling, and I'd yeah. say like with AEW, that's probably like they're there might be a little bit too choreographed at mm-hmm. times. You know what I mean? I feel like if you show something like that to somebody that doesn't watch wrestling, they're gonna be like, "Well, this looks fake." Yeah, they're yeah. That's exactly what they're gonna say. Yeah, but what I what I like about it, and what draws me to it, is I can tell that they're it's like they're doing what they want to do, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're free to be their character yeah. to an extent. Yeah. Way more than like WWE, where it's like yeah. I'm watching these guys, and it feels like they don't really want to do this. Yeah, because they're getting written stupid crap. Yeah, you know? and then I had to stop that watching wrestling, man, because because it's so bad. Yeah, WWE, they 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 turned me away for a couple of years, right around like the 2000, and uh, I probably said I stopped watching like right after DX, like the second run in the DX, mm-hmm. probably like right around 2000. Like before CM Punk's run. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's when it got really bad, in my opinion, was yeah. around then. I didn't watch that. Too much. Yeah, no. I tried to hold on, man. And then even the later years, I started watching it more again for the the, the divas. I guess they're not even called yeah. divas anymore. They're the best they, on thing on WWE. They were, yeah, they for a long time. And I just gave I think up, they man. Still are. They probably still are. Uh, I know I was a big, like, Liv Morgan fan, and yeah. she's still out there. They're doing her dirty. Yeah. Like, a lot of those wrestlers would be better in a place like uh, AEW or even Ring of Honor. Yeah. Well, I feel like you you got two spectrums, too, where WWE is scripting too deep, way too much, and they're giving guys stuff that they don't believe in, and you can tell. Not to WWE. But then there's there's (laughs) AEW, who's letting the guys do everything they want, but it's too much. It's too wild. So you got to pull them back a little bit. Yeah. But, like, speaking of the Divas, Becky Lynch was actually the wrestler that brought me back into watching wrestling. Yeah, she's good, man. She had a good character. She got fire. Yeah, she had a good character. It was believable. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. But then, like, you know, I was watching, and shortly after watching it, I was just like, I can't watch this anymore. Yeah, it's just and then boring. I started watching like indie stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like indie stuff and New Japan, Ring of Honor, and uh, All In. I watched, and then from that, like I, I came back to wrestling like literally perfect time for like the AEW's release. Mm-hmm. But you know, like I said, they have some things that I like kind of turns me away at times too. Yeah, but you know, whether it's wrestling or not, a boring TV show is a boring TV show. Facts. And that's just how I feel about them. So if I hear something was good, I'll check it out on YouTube right. after. But it's just hard to dedicate yourself to something you don't even really want to see. But And your pure just overexposure to it. Yeah, absolutely. So I was born in 86, so my earliest memories are like 88. SummerSlam and things like that. That's still yeah, really way, early, man. You go way back. <laughs> yeah. You go way back. What's that? You got some stickers over there? Some visit? Those for the promotion? <laughs> yeah, hand out some merch. Yeah, so yo, pull, up we got their, it, uh, pull up their um their uh YouTube channel. That's where you guys usually mostly show YouTube, off all yeah. Shows. Yeah. Just scroll down a little bit, scroll through some of the videos. I'd play them, but like YouTube always bans Always. always. And of course I use copyrighted music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, bro, that's the worst. Yeah, uh, it is. I've had people on here where I've I've uh it like like I had videographers. I'm gonna choose music videos. And we played the music video they shot and they copyrighted us. Yeah, because they don't own it. They, yeah, they <laughs> don't own it. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, everything I'm doing, I'm just doing gorilla style, man. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, you guys got how many videos on here? Ooh, Over a thousand? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, a lot. We've been running since 2002. So much content, man. Yeah, and it, it goes back. Another thing that I like, you know, I like to highlight on this uh, show and uh, is like consistency and like resi- and persistence. Mm-hmm. I feel like those are qualities that create great people. Uh, if you're able to, you know, stay consistent, stay on the grind. And persist through the ins and outs and yeah. different variables coming at you. Yeah, those that makes you a a great, impressive person. But yo, we got this. Yo, switch to his view. Yeah, that's like our checklist of uh, magnets. Oh, these are like all the magnets you got. Yeah, use? that's just like the promo. I made these like mystery packs of merch and uh, threw that in all of them. So you get the pins. Where can That's they get buddy. these at? Um, the, right now, I'm just trying to hustle them on Facebook, man, yeah. on, on the Facebook page for WZW. You can hit me up. Uh, so what's the, the – pull up the that's, WZW? That's my boy Scuba Steve's logo. He's a big Lost fan, so we knocked off the logo for him. Oh, yeah? Yeah, perfect. Is he a, um, a wrestler? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Scuba Steve. Shout out Scuba Steve. Yeah, that, Yo, that, that's his brother there. over there, actually, Kevin. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's Scuba Steve's brother. <laughs> pull up the yeah, – there yeah, goes this their is our fam- page. Z Z uh W Z I keep doing that. I keep mixing <laughs> up the letters. W Z W wrestling on yeah. Facebook, man. Yeah, that's so, us. Oh yeah, go to my go to uh, his view. 
Switch the camera too. It's that magnet. Yeah, the splat. Yeah, that's the splat. I'm just a big okay. Nickelodeon mark, man. Yeah, so I, me too. <laughs> I, mean, I was more of a Cartoon Network guy. Cause Understandable. The, the anime. Yo, you guys got some cool stuff in here. I'm yeah, a, we got some stuff. I'm definitely going to comp on. You know, I support, man. I love the, the yeah, stickers, That's one man. of the wrestlers, Jamie. He's he's an all right kid. You guys got some. What is this, like a pack? You guys sell like. Yeah, yeah that's seen his collection of like stuff. Oh, that this he's, is your uh, personal. He's like, you ain't buying <laughs> nothing. No, he's, have some if you want, though. Yeah, we're, we're good with our stuff. We're, I bought it for space. Since 2002. Yeah, yeah, a long time, man. I was still in high school. Man, yo, bro, I'm so impressed, bro. <laughs> like, I can't even. I, I always say I never actually became cool. I just convinced everybody I was cool with this <laughs> fake wrestling brand. <laughs> well, no, bro. It's it's people, they recognize that you're a, a maverick. They recognize yeah. that you're. You're you're um you're stepping into the unknown and you're yeah. you're paving away. Always like nothing's promised to you in this life and and you're okay with that. Yeah. And you're at risk and that's something to be admired. Like that's that's something a lot of people can't overcome. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's been an adventure, you know. Yeah. And I really can't say I regret it. Sometimes I get like really salty after a show goes bad and I'm like, I'm never running a show again. <laughs> and these guys have heard it a million times. But guess what? Guess what? I'm always back. You're always back. <laughs> I'm always back. And that's the mark of a true conqueror, bro. I, I Somebody so. who gets knocked down and gets right back up. Yeah. Keeps Sometimes stomping I think forward. that I was made for more than writing wrestling, but um it doesn't really seem like it. I think that's all I'm here for, man. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you have to like it. I do. You I do like, like it. it. As stressful as it gets, you know, when you get to a day of a show and half the guys are like, oh, I can't make it. And you're like, oh, great. I got to film in two hours. Um, <laughs> so is that a, is that do? a problem you have oh, like, yeah. with not contracting wrestlers? It's yeah. Like, there's no money in it, you yeah. know. So I'm really just taking everybody's word that they'll be there. Right. And that gets really hard to do. And sometimes they, they snub you, like, right the day mm-hmm. of. And so things come up, and I'm I'm very understanding, and I try not to give people crap about it. I try to just eat it yeah. and rewrite. But it, it gets hard. Yeah, I can, only, I can only imagine, especially, like, you're putting so much of your life into this thing. Yeah. And you clearly take it, like, beyond seriously. So Yeah, it's like, I try. It's like people, it's like, you can at least give me a notice. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that gets hard, you know. Like, sometimes I'll have a whole show written around one person they're like the important focal point and then they and then they can't make it and they tell me like two hours before the show so now here we go i have to rewrite while everybody's coming to me at the show asking what am i doing today so do you like does that lead you into basing like the merit of your show off of the people who are most reliable to a degree but you also have to follow who's hot and yeah. who's getting a reaction at the time right especially since a lot of our like audience reaction during especially this covid era where you can't really have too many people from the outside there right sort of a closed set at this point so it's just us and our friends so i'm trying to pull reactions out of people who are sort of in the know already yeah you know they know what's going on yeah (laughs) and then even if they don't know what's going on they've known me long enough to know when i'm like working them yeah (laughs) yo so like you know as a you know i admire like um literature and writing and that's one thing Mm -hmm. i like about wrestling so when you're writing, you're like, you know, obviously when you're, I view writing like sculpting almost mm-hmm. where like when I write things, I just like dump, dump, dump things on the page, dump things on the whatever yeah. I'm writing on. And then I go back and like refine it mm-hmm. and like cultivate it. But a lot of times that takes another perspective. Like, we, you know, the world, the universe is experienced like on a multi perspective plane. You guys see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like. Who do you go to with your, like, the check to be like, yo, is this good? Like, uh, well, I got to be picky with that sometimes because there are a lot of guys that they'll just kiss my ass and tell me yeah. everything's good. Then they're all like, oh, Mark's a genius. And I'm like, yo, all right, let's back up a little bit here, man. I'm not a genius. I've never drawn a dime. I'll go over it with the wrestlers that are involved to see what they think. Right. And then I'll just start trying to get with people who are a little more real with me about it. Yeah. But it's still really hard because when you're a creative type, people want to be on your good side when you're writing for them. Exactly. You can't go to the wrestlers. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. I try to go to like friends that don't even like wrestling because I'll start pitching things and I try to make it have nothing to do with wrestling. I try to write the least wrestling show about wrestling (laughs) that that I can. can. Yeah. So that gets hard. So how did you, like, build, like, your following, like, your fan base? You were telling me that, like, people would just be walking by and seeing the shows. Yeah, all the time. Uh, And then the internet was, like, big for us. Yeah. So we were on that first YouTube jump. Yeah. We were already already going when YouTube started. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, we're old. (laughs) That's crazy. So you've you've really just seen the evolution of the internet over time. Yeah. 
Yeah, when we started, we just had like a GeoCities website through Yahoo. Wow, that's that's and interesting. We were happy if we had photos from the show to fucking upload. That's Sorry interesting. Sorry for the profanity. Um, and so then, how'd you promote before the internet? Locally, man. Flyers, hang them up around town. Wow. Nobody ever really showed up, but sometimes they would. And then early on, we were handing out tapes yeah. in school. We were like handing out tapes of our shows to people. And then those would get around. That's and crazy. <laughs> we would find other feds. How'd like, you film? Like just old school cameras? Yeah. Back then? Yeah. Shout out to my boy Robert Shaw, who I'm sure won't listen to this, but he was our first <laughs> cameraman. He Shout was out my, Robert. Yeah. Robert Shaw was our first cameraman. He was a buddy of mine in high school and he had a video camera and none of us did. He didn't wrestle, but he was there every week to film in 2002. So as the internet evolved, yeah, you guys evolved with the internet and, and how did that change your experience? It made everything easier in a way, but it also made things a lot harder because there's a bigger focus. Yeah. So now I can't just be handing out raw tapes in school. I got to get on there and try to cut some of this footage or try to figure out how to make a highlight video. Right. And while maintaining a full-time job and having, like, a life, right. <laughs> it gets hard to balance. Sometimes. No, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand, bro. I understand. But just the fact that you've been... T- Chugging for sixteen years, bro. That's that's. Damn. I got the utmost respect. Yeah, I took hey, off wanna, three. You took, took off three. Yeah, I took off three years. Uh, fairly recently, I took off twenty fifteen. Then I took off seventeen and eighteen, and then I was just ready to relaunch again in twenty nineteen. Yeah. I guess I tried to have some of the other guys run shows, and it didn't go well. Yeah, because they don't got the same. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, it's like oh, I know. Getting drunk's fun, but you can't run a show drunk. I learned that the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I had like a an event, an event, uh, like a little. It was like kind of like this multimedia space, but like on weekends and nights we do like events and stuff. And I used to just always have to like you know hold it. He used to be working there with me, and I used to have to hold it down. And I couldn't like have fun. It was mm-hmm. it wasn't fun. Yeah, it's not fun. Like, I, I could, hate going to shows. <laughs> More than anyone. Bro. You probably got a million people asking you a million yeah. questions. Like, by the time the show is over, because I'm grinding from the moment I get there to the time I leave, and I leave last. Is it, is it, is it you get a lot of anxiety? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm anxiety driven, though. Yeah. So Me too. I'm running all day. Like, if you watch our shows from like last year, it's a full show. Like, we don't cut the cameras. So you can actually see me if you watch in the background running around, like getting with people, <laughs> telling them, like, yo, I'm going to need you to queue right here. <laughs> Yo, so just speaking back to that being anxiety driven thing, because you know, mm-hmm. I'm I agree with you. I, I think that is an important thing to talk about to people because a lot of people are dealing with anxiety, yeah. and I think it's important for them to understand that that is a that is a, a system built into us to push us. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you just sit there, and the worst thing you can do is just sit there and be anxious. Like yeah. if you have the anxiety, you gotta, you, you gotta go do something. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take action and put your left foot in front of your right. Yeah, it's and, not often that you'll catch me just sitting around not doing anything. Right. And if I am, it's because I've like picked up one of my friends, and now they're stuck chilling with me <laughs> and to keep me distracted. But <laughs> I just hate being still. I like to stay moving. Oh, he's talking wrestling and stuff. I love. Yeah. I love wrestling. I'm so always much. just hoarding nostalgic things and. Yo, pull up, uh, did we pull up all the social media? We got the Facebook, we got no, the we YouTube. we pulled up the YouTube, I think. Yeah, I don't Instagram? remember. Yeah, we got an Instagram. Uh, did you queue it up? Yeah, it's right there. Oh, there yeah, that's us. I don't, I don't post on there a lot because I'm bad with social media. I'm bad with Instagram, too. With Instagram. I don't understand it. Give him a follow on Instagram. Yeah, yo, give you us wanna, a follow. You want to bring the belt over? <laughs> Switch back to his view. Yeah, Look at this, this beautiful is, uh, championship. Yeah, it's about... This is the uh, we we call this the WZW Multi Madness Championship. So, run explain that to the people. What does that mean? The Multi Madness Championship is a title that is only uh, defended in multi man matches, whether it's a six way or a four way or whatever four, it four is. Way, triple yeah, threat. yeah. But as long as there's more than two people in there, the belt could be on the line. Because I like to do unique things. I don't want right. to be like everybody. I noticed else. that about your shows. You yeah. have like different style matches. I've never even seen or heard of. Yeah, before. we try to do a lot of weird stuff. Because uh, we don't want to just blend in with the crowd. Man, this thing is beautiful, bro. Yeah. I sort of got Play with it, thing. man. Yeah, it's fine. Tell, <laughs> tell him before this, I went on live on Facebook. Yeah. I was shoot my own little promos. Yeah, he was hype. I was super hype. <laughs> bro, when he, when, uh, when he sent me the picture of it, that's when I was so hype. Yeah. Bro. I was like, yo, you guys got a belt? He's like, yeah, I got a belt. I got a picture. I'm going to take a picture of it right now. Yeah. He sent me the picture. I, I marked that so hard. I was like, yo, they got a belt, bro. Because when we were kids, like in my neighborhood I grew up, 
we were kids. We used to like, uh, we used to kind of do like what you, it wasn't like um, really like professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. It was more like shoot wrestling. Yeah. And like, the only way you really win is to like choke somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it when you're kids, man. You beat the crap out of each other. Because like, yo, I'm not going to get pinned. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to let you count to three from yeah. kicking out. Yeah, I remember starting like doing crap like that in my basement. And like, I don't count that as part of our canon, obviously. Yeah, but, yeah, but everybody does it, I think. Everybody does it. Yeah. So we used to have our own little belts and stuff too. And bro, when you won the belt, bro, because there'd be <laughs> days, bro, where I'd be like choking out my buddy for like 30 minutes straight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get him to tap. But isn't it great how terrible friends are to each other? Right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> friends are always terrible to each but other. It, it made us tough and it like yeah. bro, it was a you generally genuinely felt good when you uh when you uh won and you yeah. took the belt home. Yeah, the holding the belt feels cool, I guess. I mean, it's not the same for me as it is for them, I'm sure, when they're like, Oh man, Mark believes in me enough for me to have the belt. Right. For me, I was like, Well, I got nobody else, so I guess I'm gonna put the belt on myself. <laughs> yeah. You know? At times. Run that out for six months. At times, but yeah, we're gonna um so what we'll do is we'll we'll what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this in and bring in another guy. Yeah, absolutely. And then mesh them all together. Yeah. I think that'd be the way to go. Yeah, man. Yo, everybody go make sure you follow um WZW uh what is it wrestling? Uh Kevin, you're my tags guy. <laughs> WZW man Warzone wrestling. Yeah, WZW. Based out of Amsterdam, New York. Based out of Amsterdam right in our backyard 518 stand up. Show love, show support, man. You know the vibes. I'm I'm fo I'm following this company OD. We're been watching their shows, bro. Yeah, I want to work with them. Yeah. I told them my facility is open for whatever they need, promo yeah. work, can whatever they need. I'm I'm behind them, man. We gonna we gonna bring a fire show to this to oven. Uh, ideally, my next step is to go pro. You know, you can only play in the backyard. For I got so some long. ideas for you. We yeah. we're, we're gonna cut this and talk about it more, and I'm bringing uh bringing some of the other guys. Yeah, but uh, let me cut this. Mike, check one two one two. The dogs in the building. Oh yeah. The dogs in the building. One time. I got mannequin here with me, man. Hey, it's Tyler Strife. Strife to meet ya. This is your multi-madness champion right here. Former WZW champion representing WZW right here all day, all night. Came a long way to say what's up to the people and they a gotta long know. Way. A long way. That's right. Bag boy Jer in the building with me, man, on the boards. You know how we do here, man. You, you cast special guest. Yeah, man, the good champ, to be here. The champ it's is nice here. Nice setup. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it's great. It. The champ is here. I'm jealous of you. I'm not gonna front. You see me eyeing the belt the whole time. Man, that belt is beautiful, man. Talk yeah. about winning that belt. You know, it's it's a really fitting belt because my name is Manic and this is the multi managed champion and I am very into video games and make uh, sure you pull, talk right up into this thing. The best thing about this belt is I won it fair and square. Double Dragon style, first man in, last man out. So how many people did you have to go through to get that belt? 19 people. The blood of Jesus. 19 yep. people. Pretty much. Yo, that belt is, that might be more valuable than the the, than the, the chip chip. How many titles of belts is there in, in uh, Warzone Wrestling? Right now, I'd say there's a belt for There's the tag. Right. There's the tag trophies. Yeah. Then there's the multi madness champion. Then there's the... Um, Amster Rico, uh, no, uh, and the ambush title. There's the ambush title, and there's also our world heavyweight title. Right. Well, shit, you had to go through 19 people to get that belt. <laughs> one at a time. No, it was four at a time. So when the one get like one gets out, the other one comes in. So it's like a fatal four way with elimination elements to it. Yeah, yeah. WZ is always really known for doing really cool, uh, innovative. Yeah, really cool matches. Innovative matches. Yeah, I, I can already. I watch. I watch. So sometimes. I, were you a ref at one point too? Sometimes, you know, anybody yeah. wants to volunteer and put the shirt on. Once you um once you you gave your uh, your promo at the beginning, I was like, Oh, I remember I remember him being a ref. Oh, you saw my promo. Yeah, I, no no, I'm saying just not, like at the beginning of the pod. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when you were talking about, you know, the, how far you came, just talk about that. You drove up here from Yeah, I live in Maryland right now. You drove up here from Maryland. My yeah, boy yeah. is not playing around. That's a dedication I like though. Yeah, I had that's to make the, it. That's the fire I like. I wouldn't even have I wouldn't even have uh, I wouldn't even have told you like I wouldn't even said nah don't come because I'm that type of way. It's just a dream come true to be here, seriously. Yeah. Just to even get an opportunity to get a camera in my face and to let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, for sure. So just talk a little bit about some of the the the, the beefs you didn't had in W in WZW wrestling. 
I got in fairly early. I didn't start in like 2002 when it originally started with a man named Hardcore in his backyard. I got in maybe 2005, and it was an interesting time too because there was people like trying every once in a while you get that one guy who wants to kind of like defect, like, right. oh, Martel's not giving me the belt, so I gotta, you know, do my own thing. Right. So I run into. Also, there was like other people trying to start up their own little promotions and stuff. Sometimes, sometimes. They didn't last. Nah, it doesn't last. It usually doesn't yeah. last. They usually just jump right back in. <laughs> so here I am. I just moved to Amsterdam, New York from Puerto Rico. Uh, He's born and raised in Puerto Rico? That's right. And uh, I'm also from uh, New York City, too, in Brooklyn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I come to Amsterdam, New York. I don't know anybody. I don't know anything. Uh, My uh, would-be trainer, uh, JT Dynamite, also known as Beef Spice. (laughs) Uh, He's another wrestler on the roster? Yeah, yeah. He taught me everything I know. He walks up to me with these Bart Simpson Liberty Spikes, and he says, Hey, wrestling? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> yeah he's like hey you like wrestling i was like sure so he you said, were a fan before a, a little bit i um just um i used to uh shoot with my friends in the yard you know yeah. uh just not, yeah not real like uh professional wrestling but just, you guys would do like what like what i was talking about earlier when you guys would just be choking each other out yeah man punch each other in the face no refs shoot power bombs <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the grass i hope so if you're lucky, if you're lucky, I used to do. I used to like wrestle around on the trampoline a lot. Oh yeah, we would power bomb each other on trampoline, go flying off. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. I've seen a lot of that on- online. Yeah. So um, you know, so you're training. Yeah. So uh, Beefy walks up to me, he says wrestling, and I'm like, yeah, I like wrestling. He's like, practices after school, meet me by the train tracks. <laughs> and uh, there's some other kids that I went to high school there uh, with there, and. Uh, I seem to be the only guy that made the tra- uh, the training. He said he was doing his own thing to compete with Martel. Oh, so you came in on you came in on the other side. Yeah, yeah, I came from the other side. On the other side, you came in on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So one day after leaving uh, a training, uh, like a practice show, I'm walking down the street on my own block. Martel has a camera in his hand, but two of the biggest guys he can find. They're walking my way. I don't know anything. I think I'm about to get jumped by this guy. So I just don't. I just spearhead it. I just walk right through him like. No comment. Right. And uh, then later, a couple of weeks ago, Martel shows up to me at the local Walmart. And he's like, hey, man, come through to party. Yeah. Uh, we're having a party at Disaster's house. So whoever that is. Yeah, whoever <laughs> Disaster is. <laughs> you want to come kick it at Disaster's out. house? <laughs> yeah, seriously. And a year later, he's my roommate, and we're doing shows twice a week out of my own backyard. Wow, bro. That's a, talk about a motherfucking story, bro. Talk about it and just... This is 2005, and right now we're in 2020. Oh, yeah. So that was, what, 15 years ago? Yeah, it's been going hard. Bro, that that right there is, is like, it's impressive, bro. Like, just to stay on this path, to stay grinding, to stay working, to stay stay together. Like, just keep having a friend for 15 years is impressive in itself. I know. I tell my wrestling friends all the time. It's like, you know, when you move to a new place, you could go to a new church or join another book club. I can't join another backyard wrestling organization where I can meet friends that, you know, we're on the same level, we understand the same kind of uh, mental mindset. Because once you start watching wrestling all the time, you get this kind of fixed uh, mentality. Of how it should be. Yeah, when you watch TV, when you watch people gaslighting each other in real life, it's like, where's the camera? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like when you see see people doing things that you would see in a wrestling show in real life. I see it all the time. I see people gaslighting all the time, especially now in today's day and age where, you know, everything's on the Internet and you want to deify yourself on your social media Yeah, page. cloud chasing, they call it. Yeah, yeah. So now you're in real life saying, like, oh, I'm infallible. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but just, you know, just running through, like, some of the, some of your major, um, your major occurrences in the promotion, what would you say was your best match? Uh, that's I could I, I always want to give a top five when right. people say ask me give a top favorite. five so my top five and make sure these are ones that they can find on the you know on the um the YouTube channel oh yeah so if you're looking for any specific wrestler on the channel you type in WCW and the wrestler's name and then there's a playlist for each wrestler oh oh that's I didn't even know that's cool yeah so if you were to look at my name WCW Manic you would see at least about a hundred matches oh, wow so you've been putting in that work. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> Put in that pain. Every Sunday. <laughs> every Sunday. A hundred matches. Let's see. Top five matches. One of my favorites is me, uh, Manic versus Joe Randa. Uh, Yo, one second. Yo, Jeremiah, go to the um, 
Go to the to the to their YouTube and pull up his playlist. So, all right, you heard number one match. Yeah, uh, no, in no particular order. I'd say me versus Joe Randa, because it's not every day you, you wrestle a guy who's the same size as you. Uh, size 140 as matches. And flies out from Kentucky. Yeah, he flew out from Kentucky. And it's not. I usually wrestle guys bigger than me, so it's nice to wrestle a guy my size. Right. And we really pulled it off. Everything we, uh, just kind of flowed easily. Uh, he's strong for, uh, for his size. I mean, it was just really good. Uh, we didn't hurt each other at all. Uh, I could have had another match afterwards. But the match was very solid. I got some handshakes from, you know, some pretty uh, respectable people out there. So I just figured to myself, that was an A match. That was a good match. Another one of my favorite matches is they go back to, uh, what was it, 2007, 2008. Martel had a bet going on with a different wrestler saying that he, I couldn't be over as a champ <laughs> and his cousin couldn't be over as a character at all. So there in comes my rival. TJ Cena. <laughs> and then Martel has to tell me in the back, yo, you gotta lose to Cena. And I'm like, come on. I hate this guy. <laughs> yeah. this Wait, guy, you hate him? You hate him real life? Or you hate him in I, character? You know, in hindsight, I think it was just a lot of like uh, both. gaslighting yeah. from both ends. Like Martel's the promoter, so he's like, hey man, this guy's talking crap. Hey man, this guy's talking crap. Because he wants to get the heat. You yeah, know? he wants, he to, wants get that real, to kill yeah. each other, really. That's a good, that's a good promoter. So one day As he telling, should. Yeah, so one day he's telling me, like, oh, man, you got to lose uh, to Cena. And then I'm complaining to other guys, like, dude, I got to lose to Cena. And they're like, oh, man, that's not right, man. So I thought to myself, if I have to lose to Cena, I'm going to lose like a star. Yeah. So I went, I bumped on everything but the matches, the, the, the dirty matches that we had. Uh, I put a hole in somebody's garage door. Uh, I got put through somebody's fence. Uh, the local neighbors were watching. Uh, they were fixing a car or something. They're probably like, "What the, the heck side. is going on?" Um, I jumped off of the second uh, story balcony with a ladder on top of it through a table. Wait, hold on. You jumped off the second story balcony with I, so I grabbed a ladder and took it to the second story balcony, opened that up, and climbed up the ladder and swan tom bombed through a table. Did you wear red tights? Yeah. Okay, I seen that. Yeah, I see. I seen that. That's good. I seen that. It was a table like black and green yep, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, I seen that. Beer pong table. I think, yeah. I, I think I caught somebody on my foot on the way down. Somebody <laughs> else was it. holding the. the Bro, when I seen that, I was like, "Yo, that dude's wild." You were like, you got up and you were just like, did you flip him off or something? Yeah, you did like something and you jumped up. I was yeah, like, yeah. Bugging. Every Sunday, I, people would just see me show up to the event, and I'm looking around, and they know. Seeing what, what is he gonna jump off next? See what you could. So you're a high flyer. More well, or less. I try to compensate for uh, my lack of flipping ability. Right. I'm not really uh, into doing back flips, flips or yeah. front flips or all that fancy stuff. I but like you'll to get to the basics. Yeah, just take a big dive. Take a big elbow. Shawn yeah. Michaels style. Yeah, just take a dive. All right, so you got you got two matches. That's two. Another one is uh, me uh, Manic versus Ian Finnegan. We wrestled for the first time in a ring together. And then this, the, the rematch was just so good. He made a music video for me. The match was... Ian Finnegan. So who's, who's Ian Finnegan? He's from Connecticut, I believe. Matt. He started, Matt, Massachusetts. He's from Massachusetts, and he's another bar, backyarder. Okay. So when the internet happened, one of, the, uh, one of Mar Martel's wrestlers kind of pulled me aside, and he's like, hey, man, I want to push ourselves forward. These guys just invited us to go to a different state train yeah. in a ring this is way unheard of at the time when the yeah. internet blew up in 2006 we're wrestling on futon mattresses and these guys have two rings in a warehouse yeah so, so it was like mind blowing it was like a big step up yeah big time and then we started meeting everybody because of YouTube and Facebook and, and just be in the community yeah it just started this whole community we had like private forums and, and message boards and uh, invite only like yeah over the top a full weekend uh, retreats everybody camping in the backyard that's fire though it's like a man sleepover, seriously. People don't know a lot about, like, um, like there's a lot of things. Like, I learned that about the graffiti scene, too. Like, out here, there's a graffiti scene, and it's, like, similar to that. Were they all sleeping tents? No, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Which is, like, like, to where it's, like, you would never, like, like all the things, like, the, the community that exists. Like, you don't ever go on, like, Facebook or something on the day and just see, like, the graf graffiti people. Like, yeah, graffitied up. But... There's at the same time, there's like 
private forums and stuff, and they like all like get together and critique their work, gotcha. and they like all know each other and their aliases, like kind of like a you're manic. Like my boy at, the, at my last space, I got like graffiti all over the walls, and the artist that did it, their name was Caked and Pink. But that's not like their that's their graffiti name. Gotcha. And like people know them as like yo that's the cake yo cake was here. Like people will come and see the art and they be like yo cake did this, pink did this. And oh, it's wow. like a whole little community. Like it all comes back to wanting to be a part of a community. Everybody exactly. wants it, and some people are more picky than others. Yeah. <laughs> some people can just go to like I said before, you could go to your local church, or you can go to Amsterdam, New York, and see some real characters. See Manic jump off a ladder from two st- stories up. I'll yeah. do it again. I jumped off a U-Haul truck once. I didn't. That, that didn't really work out. Moving? No, I wasn't <laughs> moving. Imagine. Oh. Yo, that. But you could do some cool stuff for the U-Haul truck. Well, we tried to take advantage for the time that we had it. <laughs> yeah, right. Take advantage. For the well, time. we got it for the day. Yo, so talk about like some of the injuries you've got. How many? Have, how many? Have, have you got any like injuries from? Perfect time to talk about injuries. So that U-Haul incident. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, this is definitely my top five least favorite matches. Uh, let's see. We had the U-Haul truck. Right. Somebody just donated us, donated to us all of the parts that we needed to build just the base of a ring. And it came with a gym mat, like a real, like, like you know, a, like, uh, like, uh, like in school, yeah. Like a, like gym mat, like, um, an amateur wrestling mat? Yeah, yeah. Full on, right. like two inches thick. So, okay. So this was like, wow, we're truly being blessed right now. Like yeah. Somebody oh, donated this, this to us. So we brought it to somebody's backyard, and I'm seeing this truck, and I show up to the event. It's right down the street from my house. My girlfriend's there, and I got to impress her, too. Yeah. So I said, hey, I'm jumping off the U-Haul truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping off the U-Haul. I told a few guys, and they were like, just move the truck closer, and then just jump into the ring. And I said, no, because then they're going to know I'm going to jump off. Right. He's got to do it completely. So you, oh, bro, you don't tell me you ran and dive off. The no, way. so the guy laid down. Well, the, the the truck was open in the back. Right. And he laid down on the concrete just below the truck. You jumped off to the concrete, bro? I sure did. Wildin'. Wildin'. <laughs> I want to say this. Dude. He was too close to the truck. He was wearing a big, big, very big, maybe a 4XL pink T-shirt <laughs> <laughs> on black uh, concrete. And uh, I missed. He was too close. He was too close, honestly. So you missed him and you landed right on the concrete? Yeah, but on camera, I totally nailed him. <laughs> like, uh, so it looked good? Oh, yeah, it looked great. That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really impossible. Impossible. I can't tell if you're joking or not. <laughs> <laughs> and the angle, it just looks like I just came right from on top. Oh, okay. Smashed him. Because the, the ring was kind of in the way, too. Yeah. So, Dang, and so the reactions. Oh, man. The crowd they was thought crazy. they were looking at a dead body. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I love this. <laughs> oh man, uh, I had to get taken to the hospital. I had uh, like muscle spasms all over my my collarbone. Oh. Uh, I had to get super glue into my, my into my skull in the back. It was pretty rough. So you split your split your wig. Yeah, literally, I went to sleep that Sunday night. Woke up on Tuesday morning. Oh, you concussed. Good oh, wow. good old concussion. That was really good. Concussion uh, soup. I also broke my ankle taking a double suplex. Uh, I didn't keep my legs straight. And if anybody's taking a double suplex, there's like no way for you to really break your fall without it like blowing all the air out of you. Right. So I was trying to find some way to break my fall. Using your feet isn't the one. So when you were so you know you were training when you were training to be a professional wrestler. One of the things you learn is how to take a fall and how to, you know. Yeah. The, number one, break your fall. In fact, anybody who's ever been hurt in wrestling, it was probably their own fall. Yeah. You didn't know how to break your own fall. Okay. Nobody gets to pick you up without your permission. You, yeah. You could just sandbag the guy. Yeah. You, know, like you don't have to power bomb somebody in a, in a rumble match. Keep things slow. Yeah, keep it. Yeah, keep it easy. Like yeah, you, know. you don't got to do too much. And it goes back to what you guys were talking about earlier. Where like people want to do too much. Yeah, but they're you, trying to maximize their time allotted to them. You really don't want to uh, max out your time. You want to buy time. Yeah, because people don't know. Everything is said and done once the wrestling match happens. You hyped up everything leading up to this one point. So all they really want to see is the two guys walk out and one of them comes up on top. Yeah, that's all they want to see is the, the conclusion to this, to this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Conclusion to this uh, conflict. Yeah, it means to an end. You don't see Stone Cold doing a double backflip through a double, uh, double stomping a guy through a table. No, nah, you see him stomping a, mole hole, a mud <laughs> hole in him. He does the same kick. A thousand times. Yeah. He kicks you in the stomach, and then it gives you a stunner. And, the only thing uh, I always liked about The Rock is the way he did his moves. 
Oh, it was so over the top. Yeah, the way he did, like it's so over the top. It's like he knew, okay, this is you know, it's, it's wrestling. This is this is scripted, but this is supposed to be entertaining. Yeah, every kick he just be kicking him, kicking him. Every like when you see him, like you see the complicated compilation on YouTube of him taking the stunner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he's all over the place. His, <laughs> his legs hit the rope. So when I that match I was talking earlier when I had to wrestle TJ Cena, I just thought to myself, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose the worst possible way. I mean, I got really banged up. I walked out okay, but in the end, he ends up I think giving me like uh, a senton splash, like his back just lands full onto my chest while my whole body is inside of a traffic cone. <laughs> Wait, you were in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear climbing up the ladder to hit him again. He grabs a traffic cone and just kind of drapes it over my head. Like one of those big, those like huge those, ones. Yeah, okay. I'm I about guess. to say, I'm picturing you. <laughs> just <laughs> picture two little legs <laughs> with vans on. And uh, I fall off the ladder and then he just capitalizes, boom, throws his whole weight on me. He's a lot bigger He's a lot bigger than he looks. He When he hits he you dense. with that. Yeah, he's dense. He hits you that shoulder tackle. It's serious. So when he come landing on me, man, this hard plastic just smashed my face. Yeah. So you took in some risks, man. You took in some risk, and you, you paid your dues. You paid your dues. So what's next for you in uh, in in in, in um, WZW wrestling? When are you gonna defend this? Well, I got the strap. When are you gonna defend this? So I'm just waiting for uh, enough people to line up. Yeah, you wait for enough challengers. Many. Yeah, man, all we got to do is buy time. Let yeah. the other guys re- uh, figure figure out what they want to do in there. I'll take a flare flop and then in the end get my title back. <laughs> yeah, let them let them let them uh let them plan. Let them try to think of a way to take you down, take you out. Yeah, that's my favorite thing. I like to show people how uh, pathetic their plans really are. Yeah, and plus they're not willing to go as far as you're willing to go. No, you got to go the distance and you got to play it smart. Who else is willing to jump off a second story balcony? <laughs> Who else? <laughs> who else is willing to? Yeah, and who do he ever beat? Yeah, and who do he ever beat? Speaking <laughs> of the devil, speaking of the devil, man, your your rival's in here right now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we get him on here, man? Let, let's let's hear what he's got to say. Let's hear what he's got to say about the man. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, look who it is right here. This is my time. Well, your time's up. Thanks for taking the stage. I'll yeah. take my belt. Yeah, yeah. fun, buddy. I'll see you. Uh, your your in time's the up. Circle. You won't see me at any fucking circle because I'm not facing you. <laughs> so you're the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're the bad guy. Yeah. You take pleasure in in, in in So so. Mark was telling me that your that your main thing, your main conflict with this this promotion, is trying to bring back pure wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> So what is it about wrestling? That, what is it about the promotion that you don't like? Most of the wrestlers. Yeah, <laughs> you don't like the wrestlers as people. No, no. You don't like their style. I don't like the flippy dippy. You don't yeah. like the flippy dippy. No, not at all. So would you have to put these paws on them? Yeah, my favorite wrestler is New Jack. So oh, you know, New Jack. <laughs> I love New Jack. Bro. I love New Jack because New Jack they'll play around. Exactly. <laughs> you stab anybody in the ring? No, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of times that I want to. <laughs> Yo, so so, you know, talk about your your rivalry with Manic, man. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know how it started. It's been so long, huh? Oh, uh, I started in 2005 in WZW. Yeah, you were you were there from pretty much around the same time he came in. Yeah, pretty much. So you guys are kind of like foils almost. Well, you guys I, are like I, two sides of the same coin. I was wrestling before that. Oh, you were okay. So you you saying you started with WZW two thousand five? Yeah. When did you start like wrestling? Two thousand two. Oh, but this is is it? You you started in Amsterdam. I started in uh, Broad Auburn. In Albany. Broad Auburn. Where's that? A little further. Yeah, about probably about thirty minutes away from Amsterdam. <laughs> thirty minutes away from Amsterdam. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, so what? What? What drew you to wrestling? Like, what made you really want to? Well, I liked the Undertaker. Like when I was little. Yeah, I liked the Undertaker. And too. Um, me and my brother, we used to go at, like be in a room and just talk and you know. Hold on, one second. Well, Keep talking. And just wrestle. And then my friend Jake, who I've known since about kindergarten, he was doing this show called IWF or whatever. 
Right. It was uh, deflated air mattress. That's what we started on. <laughs> Back in the day. Deflate, huh? Yeah, a deflated air mattress, which has no give. <laughs> so, like, you know, when you were, when you were, like, doing these things, man, did you get, like, a lot of, a lot of, like, crazy injuries and stuff? Like, oh, yeah. Concussions I, I, and, and. I've, um, dislocated my shoulder, which wasn't that bad, but that's how it became in WZW. That's how you. That's how you got in. Yeah, but it was, with your dislocated shoulder. Yeah, because um, he gave you time to sit back and like take a break and. I, well, I really I didn't take a break at all. It was uh, <laughs> more. I was uh, WZW came to Broad Auburn, and we had a like an IWF and WZW type yeah. thing, and we were all wrestling, and I dislocated my shoulder, and instead of going to the hospital, I took like about. Four lawyer tabs. I put my arm in a sling and I hung out with <laughs> Mark. You and then that's it. So, so what, 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 what attracted you to WZW specifically? Um, I didn't know about them at first, and I don't know when they showed up. I was like, okay, well, IWF only had three people in it. It, oh, okay. it started out with me, Jake, and my brother Josh, who's Grady. He's a wrestler now in WZW. Okay, so so the W, but WZW had a had a. Like I said, that's what impressed me was the size of the roster. Oh, yeah, we have so a lot of people. So it was the same people. thing for you, huh? Yeah, we have a lot of people. Yeah. So, um, you know, what's your what's 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 next on you? Like, what are you looking for at WZW? What's your next moves? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to keep going for a belt? you going for... I, I've already held the belt. you want to kick the crap out of Manic? I mean, that's right. ideal. That's <laughs> ideal. That's, that's the, ideal. <laughs> so what is it about? Is it because Manic that takes those risks? And he does those things, and that's what you... Tell that, where you no, with no, no. Manic does flippy-dippy stuff. That's <laughs> about it. <laughs> that's what I, I'm saying. Is that where your heat you know, stems? No, no, my heat started. Okay. My heat started. We were all chilling. And he said he was straight edge. Okay. I have no problem with straight edge people. Yeah. Whatever. But I'm sorry, but you can't be straight edge and robo trip. <laughs> so so can't. so he was like pissing me off because he was trying to do all that shit and I was straight like, edge stuff. So you had a, you seen a flaw in his logic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're flawed in logic, and as a and as a he, he's very flawed. As a supreme <laughs> being of, of of holding people accountable, you had to you had it, it, it wouldn't have sat right with you to just let him go and let mm -hmm. him continue out his life with his flawed logic. No, so you had to beat some logic into him. Yeah. How many times have you have you how many how many times have you beat some logic into the guy? Oh, I don't know how many matches we've had. Um, hmm, <laughs> I can't even count. You can't even count. No, when how, I, how many have you won? Uh, I think we no yeah we tied. You're tied. Yeah, we're tied. <laughs> what's the what's the the most damaging thing you've done to inflict pain on him? Oh, like he was saying when uh when he that whole match when he jumped off the Oh balcony. yeah, that was on you? All right. That you, was on me, yeah. You moved on purpose, didn't you? No, he hit me. But oh. the table didn't break because that was very unbreakable beer pong table. Yeah. Um But that whole Oh, that was from that was the ladder. That was not the U Haul. Yeah, that was the ladder. Okay. Um when I did the senton on him with the traffic cone. Yeah. He didn't know that was coming. He didn't know it was coming. He had to, you had to take that to the next level. And um, I also had a shirt that Mark and I were talking about and we bought. It was on, on a website. I'm not sure what the website's called anymore, but I did have the shirt. And it said, Manic Fuck, uh, Manic Fuck Chlamydia. <laughs> he didn't know I had it. So during the match, he was slapping me. I'm like, All right. he slaps me one more time, I'm taking it off. Yeah. So he slaps me. Take off my shirt, and I have the man in fuck Lamedia. He looked at he looked at me, and he said he hated me, and he called Mark an asshole. You know, and you did that just to you, just to get under his skin. Yeah, we did that to troll him. So you say he's your he's your greatest rival. Yeah, yeah. You think yeah. he represents that flippy dippy style that you hate so much? Yes, facts. He's like the, he's like <laughs> WZW's manifestation of that. Yeah, he he needs to go away. He needs to go away. <laughs> There's only one way to get him to go away. Exactly, have a match against him. And beat him in his, a submission, right? I'll beat him for his belt. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the multi madness belt, but well, we could throw you in there. There you go, the triple threat right there. <laughs> yeah, I got you. We go there. <laughs> How about that? How about that? <laughs> the lines and then we'll duke it out in the end. So there you, there the you go. There you go. Yo, man, it's been great having you on here, man. That being said, man, the WZW crew is here too. You know the vibes. Yo, you guys go check out everything, man. 
Shout out to JT Cena. JT Cena? TJ Cena. TJ Cena. And man, it, Mark, <laughs> man, I shout out to the crew, man. You're going to see me on there soon. You know, you know, I'm just in the gym getting ready. Getting right. I've been training to make my debut, but it's coming. 